in the earlier class we discussed the basic theory of SHM as you know that any system which is in SHM where the acceleration is directly proportional displacement and directed opposite displacement and today we are going to discuss some problems related to simple harmonic motion. Earlier we discussed spring mass system where a spring of constant k connected to a mass m, a spring of constant a connected to mass m, if you give a small displacement x, so we calculated the frequency, so we know that f is equal to minus kx and f is equal to ma and a acceleration a is equal to minus k by m. So, a is equal to minus omega square x. That is what yesterday we last class we completed this. a is equal to minus omega square x where omega is root of k by m. Now, if more than one spring is there, we will see how to calculate the frequency of oscillation, angular frequency of oscillation. Let k1 and k2, k1 and k2, the spring constant of two springs connected to a mass m. Okay. So, more than one spring is present now. Okay. If x is the displacement of this mass, okay. x is the displacement of this mass, both the springs will be extended by the same amount x only. If x is the displacement of this mass, both the springs will be extended by the same amount. The restoring force developed here is k1 x, here is k2 x. The restoring force due to first spring is k1 x, due to second spring is k2 x. The total restoring force f is equal to k1 x plus k2 x, the total restoring force which is acting up. But we know that f, f is equal to m a or you can write the effective force k x is equal to k 1 plus k 2 into x, anyhow this effective k, x gets cancelled k is equal to k 1 plus k 2. When two springs are connected parallel, the effective spring constant is k 1 plus k 2. So, in angular frequency omega root of in place of k you write k 1 plus k 2 by m. So, the frequency of the system omega is equal to root of k 1 plus k 2 by m. So, what is the condition for parallel? When the two springs are connected in parallel, both extension will be extension or compression is same, x is same, the restoring forces will be different. is a condition for parallel. When two springs are connected parallel, x is same for both and f is different, restoring force developed. Similarly, if two springs are connected in series, how to calculate effect to k?
लेट K1, K2 are two springs connected one after the other that is in series and this two springs connected to a mass M. If X is the extension of the, the displacement of the M, the extension of this spring is X1, the extension of the spring is X2. Okay. Let us say, suppose I am applying force F down and both will experience same restoring force. Both will experience same restoring force, but their extensions are different. The total extension x is equal to x1 plus x2. The total extension is x1 plus x2. So, what we know that f is equal to kx, this is f by k, x1 is f by k1, x2 is f by k2. So, F gets cancelled, where K is called the effective spring constant of K1 and K2 together. So, when two springs connected parallel, the formula to calculate effective spring constant is 1 by K is equal to 1 by K1 plus 1 by K2. Okay. Then, once you know the effective time constant, omega is equal to root of K by K. So, we know that so omega is equal to root of k by m, you can use where k is equal to k1 k2 by k1 plus k2, we can find omega value. Now, let us try to apply this SHM theory to solve some problems related to different branches of physics. Let us say SHM connected to rotatory motion. A rod, a rod of length L, a rod of length L fixed at center, fixed at center, one end it is connected to a spring of constant k, the other end of the spring is connected to fixed support, the other end connected to another spring of constant or you can take k1, k2 also. Now, about this point, this, about this point, this is fixed. If I give a small angular displacement, if I give a small angular displacement and leave it, then the system will execute simple harmonic motion. The, sim the system will execute simple harmonic motion. Let us find out the frequency of it, omega. Let x is the extension of the spring and the same is x for this. So, there are two forces acting on the rod. Okay. The restoring force acting on this rod is kx due to this kx due to this. There are two forces acting on the rod, restoring forces. The torque, the total torque experienced by this rod is kx into L by 2 okay. because the perpendicular distance is L by 2, half of the length. kx is equal, kx into L by 2. 
then we know that torque is equal to I alpha k L by 2. So, if theta is the angular displacement, if theta is angular displacement, x is equal to L by 2 into theta. The x is equal to L by 2 into theta. Since this torque try to rotate in opposite direction, this is called restoring torque. The torque produced is equal to restoring torque. So, restoring torque tau is equal to which is I alpha minus k L by 2 into L by 2 theta. So, alpha is equal to where alpha is called angular acceleration. Alpha is equal to minus k L square by 4 I into theta. Okay. Again, the angular acceleration is directly proportional to angular displacement and directed opposite angular displacement which is the condition for simple harmonic motion. Okay. You can also call it angular simple harmonic motion okay. and we know that the relation between acceleration is equal to minus omega square x or angular acceleration alpha is equal to minus omega square theta. I can write. So, the omega square is equal to KL square by 4i. Here what is i? Where i is the moment of inertia of the rod about this axis. Okay. Since the axis is passing through center, the moment of inertia of this rod i is equal to m L square by 12, where m is the mass of the rod. By substituting this i here, we can find out omega from omega square. From that, you can find out the angular frequency of the oscillatory motion. Okay. So, here not only simple harmonic motion knowledge, we need the rotatory motion knowledge also required, but like tau is equal to i alpha and moment of inertia of the rod about a central axis. Okay. So, this is a this in this problem. So, two concepts are involved one is oscillatory motion, the other one is rotatory motion. Let us take up another problem related to this. Now, a rod of length L, a rod of length L suspended from a fixed support here suspended from fixed support, the two springs are connected at the bottom. The other ends of the spring fixed, the spring constant k is also k. Now, give a small displacement and leave it, then the system will execute simple harmonic motion. Okay. Our basic thing is you have to find with what frequency this rod will be oscillating. Now, if you give a small angular displacement, small angular displacement, let us say theta small angular displacement is rod, x is the x compression of the spring which is same x will become extension of the spring. If x is the compression of this right spring, same x will become the extension for this. Okay. Now, the total torque which is try to bring back to original position that is called restoring torque. The restoring torque is provided by now three forces. One is due to restoring force of this spring, one is due to this, the third one is due to gravitational force. In the earlier problem, okay, 
this for gravitational force is not providing any torque. Now, the gravitational force which always acts from center of mass. So, gravitational force also provides a torque, then the frequency of oscillation will change now. So, total torque tau is equal to kx into L by 2, oh sorry, kx into L because kx is acting at distance L where L is the length of the rod, where L is the length of the rod. Okay. Since two springs are there, two, of course, you have to write minus, if displacement x is in this direction, torque is producing upward direction, plus, plus this mg into perpendicular distance is L by 2 sin theta. This kx into L is the torque due to spring force, 2 are there multiply by 2 plus gravitational force mg into L by 2 sin theta. So, let us write tau is equal to minus of 2 k x l plus m g l by 2 theta. For small angle, sin theta is replaced by theta. Okay. Now, we know that x is equal to l theta. We know that this x is equal to l theta. In place of x, you can write l theta, but tau is equal to i alpha tau is equal to i alpha minus 2 k l x is again l theta m g l by 2 theta. Fine. Now, the angular acceleration alpha is equal to some constant omega square into theta. We can take out theta common we will get omega square and what is i? Here i is the rod is rotating about an axis passing through its one end. Okay. So, i is equal to m l square theta, uh, 3. The moment of inertia of the rod is m l square by 3. Substitute here and alpha is equal to minus omega square theta. From that find out the angular frequency of oscillation. Okay. So, the difference between this problem and that earlier problem is, in earlier problem this term is not there, in this problem this gravitational force also providing the restoring torque, that is why the frequency of oscillation will change.